This is Jenny Brandt with Unleash Your God-Given Healing. Let's look at seven tips for a healthy vacation when flying. Our mission to stay healthy becomes more difficult when our travel involves flying. Airplane travel limits what you can bring with you. Traveling with a checked cooler doesn't generally work when your travel time exceeds six hours. In addition, your body can experience jet lag. So here are seven tips for a healthy vacation when we must board an airplane to get to our travel destination. Number one is simple, dress comfortably. Wear loose clothes that give you space to move and layers to allow you to adjust to changes in temperature. Also, wear comfortable shoes with support. As airports, as we know, are places where we can sometimes walk for miles. If you've ever clocked yourself, you know that. Dress for comfort over style. When flying six hours or more, you'll be glad you dressed for comfort. Number two, choose foods wisely. When we go on cruises or travel overseas, many buffets are offered. I frankly don't like the temptation of buffets and I try to avoid them, but when we can't, we carefully choose the best foods and limit ourselves to one plate. We encourage ourselves to not overeat by sometimes choosing a smaller plate. We look for the lean meats, wild caught fish and seafood, fresh fruits and vegetables, salads as meals, and we drink water with lemon. I limit myself to one serving of whole grain bread each day. Constantly drinking fluids with high calories is known to expand our waistlines. They don't call me the smoothie a day gal for nothing. When in hotel rooms, I literally make my own smoothie for lunch or for dinner with a stir stick. This is an easy cost saving and nutrient dense drink that counts as a meal replacement. Otherwise, I generally drink water with every meal. Your cruise ship or all-inclusive resort may offer meals around the clock. But remember, our bodies don't do well when we eat too much or too close to bedtime. Every time a meal is offered doesn't mean you need to partake. Number three, hydrate during your flight and throughout your vacation. Traveling can be a time when your body easily becomes dehydrated. Don't let that happen. That's why we travel with our stainless steel water dispensers in our carry-on. We go through TSA with them empty and then we refill them at the airport hydration stations. One of the healthiest things you can do on an airplane is to increase your hydration. Every time the flight attendants pass by, don't be afraid to ask for more water. It's best to avoid or limit alcohol and coffee as both contribute to dehydration. Make hydration literally a daily goal on your trip and practice moderation with alcohol for your entire trip. Again, here's my stainless steel carry-on, lightweight and something that helps us get through the airport and on the plane with extra hydration. Number four, move on that airplane and every day of your trip. Long flights promote a sedentary lifestyle, which is not good for circulation. My husband and I now choose the aisle and middle seats so it's easier to get up and move around on that plane. This movement, along with increased hydration, helps improve circulation and guards against blood clots. 
especially as we get older. When you arrive at your destination, avoid the people movers and walk as much as you can through that airport. Make sure you exercise daily on your vacation. We tend to get more exercise on vacations than we do at home. Skip the elevator, take the stairs. Keep in mind that some of the best tours are walking tours. On a day in Paris, we actually clocked over 10 miles. All of our extra steps helped us to not return home weighing an extra five to 10 pounds. Number five, ground yourself after you get off that plane. If you get jet lag, and you will on long flights, ground yourself by walking barefoot in the sand, ocean water, or on grass as soon as you can. Grounding helps restore your body's circadian rhythms and electrical equilibrium. Just a 15 to 30 minute walk in your bare feet can bring your body back into balance. According to research, grounding activates the vagus nerve, which helps to regulate our nervous system. Grounding can also improve sleep and boost our immune response. And your vagus nerve is located right here. You can also massage it. During a recent mammogram, I asked the technician, how much radiation am I getting? And she responded, oh, no more than flying across the US. Hmm. Until that day, I didn't know about radiation exposure when flying. Air crew and frequent flyers receive higher radiation doses from cosmic radiation, depending on the length of flight and the altitude of their trips. The higher and longer the trips, the more cosmic radiation. Something to think about. A good reason to ground too. Number six, make no plans for the first day after your arrival on overnight flights. The flights overseas can really do a number on your body. I've been on many a mission trip where we started ministering right after we were picked up at the airport after losing our sleep that night, no more. By the sixth day, nearly all of us were run down and showing signs of immune dysfunction. Now, after my husband and I arrive, we go straight to our hotel and crash to make up for the sleep loss. We did this last year in London. Our hotel welcomed us at 9 a.m. with an air-conditioned room. After sleeping four to five hours, we took a stroll, ate a late lunch, and turned in early. The next morning, we were ready to go and refreshed. This year will be a real test. We'll need to be even more proactive when we fly to Australia. It's also important to make sleep a priority for your entire trip. We usually turn in around 9 to 10 p.m. each night when on vacation. Number seven, last but not least, wear compression socks when flying, especially flights over three to four hours. These socks are usually made from elastic materials such as spandex or nylon or a combination, which allow the socks to conform and stretch to the shape of each individual's legs. These socks provide a firm yet gentle pressure, which promotes blood flow through the vein and helps prevent blood clots, so important. With our flight to Australia, from the US being over 17 hours, this is the first time we'll be wearing these socks. I've only flown halfway around the world one previous time before, 15 years ago. Since I'm older, I realize I must be proactive, and these are those compression socks. <laughs> Thanks to the Blakeleys for loaning me theirs. There's nothing more exhilarating than exploring God's creation around this beautiful world. But there's nothing more disappointing 
than missing out on the trip you've saved up for because you don't feel well. These seven travel tips for a healthy vacation when flying can help you to maintain your energy levels and avoid illnesses while you enjoy the opportunities before you. Are you surprised to discover that we are exposed to cosmic radiation when we fly? Did you ever wonder why pilots and flight attendants can only be in the air so many hours in a week and they must have time for rest in between? By the way, I'll let you know how it goes after we get back from Australia. This is the first time we paid to get in the exit row to have more leg room. So, until next time, healthy travel tips. I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, share it, and click the notification bell so you will know when I post new information. Until then, here's to your healthy travel. God bless.